Hey guys. Uh, so, in a few days, Kian's going to like increase the PCO limit on the official servers to like 20,000 20, or something. So, I'm preparing my ship. Well, I'm building and upgrading my ship for the upcoming change and updates. So after the fly around we're gonna start from the back here. Those bulges are where the backward and some of the upward thrusters are. That's my 7 PCU landing gear, which is much cheaper than a normal landing gear, rises the ship to allow planetary drilling if you put a hinge for the drill, less clangy, and allows you to slide or kinda slide for lazy mining, but not recommended. It's a much cheaper and stable option compared to like landing gear on pistons, which might bug the ship, the space between the bottom of the landing gear and the bottom of the ship's hull also prevents excess damage to the ship when landing a bit too hard as it absorbs most of the brunt of the impact, it also doesn't increase the overall height or width of the ship and doesn't block the bottom turret's line of sight. The whole of my ship is also meant to be traversable without jetpack, so in the rare occasion where you run out of jetpack fuel, whether on planets or moons, you'll still be able to access the whole ship. This is what I call the neutral area, or neutral faction area, for those moments where someone from a neutral faction wants to give you something or drop off something, and you're in the middle of doing something, you don't have to share your cargo or gatling guns to all to allow them to access your cargo and worry about unsharing them later, you can just tell them to put them in the boxes or freights outside, which is very handy to have especially with the new higher PCU limit on the official servers, the extra PCU cost isn't too bad. This is the hangar. It's 3x3x7 three by three by blocks in size, which is quite big for a small grid vessel, it also has cargo access to allow you or faction mate to build here, or you can put a connector there to connect the vessel if that's your thing or play style, will limit the size and type of vessel you can put here though. Now we're gonna move to the interior. This is the medbay, and that's the toilet, relatively private. And this is the rest of the middle level of the interior, as you can see the lockers pretty close to the exit, where you can put guns and stuff so you don't have to rummage through cargoes to find them, or elite tools whenever you are finished using them and don't want to lose them. Three beds here interior turret for safety, some medical and lab equipment for decor or display which is also placed sensibly right after the entrance and a desk for extra seat. This is the lower level or living area. As you can see there's some couches, a bar and TV, this area is pretty well decorated without wasting too much PCU. So the purpose of this area is to make the ship more livable, or less cramped to hang around in for your faction members and stuff, especially on long journeys or jump chains. Realistically, most of the time everyone in a faction just get or build their own ship anyway, but sometimes people do get on board a single ship, especially when the other faction members just got started, or maybe you guys want to do something or some stuff together where your faction members don't really want to or feel necessary to bring their own ships. It's a relatively comfortable area to hang around and chat in. There's also a cheap one, PCU light and access to cargo. The LCD image can be periodically changed to reduce boredom or staleness, or you want to put up a mim of what's happening or something, can also be used as a faction MOTD for daily reminders of what to do and other things. There's also a jukebox for music. Extra storage for people who sleep here and stuff. If you don't want to cramp everyone's guns and tools on the locker above. 
there's two extra beds here and mandatory planter, vending machine there. Kitchen here and this dining desk with this beautiful view outside, especially when you are parked in a planet's or moon's orbit or a good surface scenery like this one. Ladder 2, remember the whole ship is traversable without jetpack. These are buttons for some of the things you'd use the most in survival, there is a button for turning off the medical room and to start the timer which turns it back on, if you play survival a lot you'll know what these are for. There is a button to turn the antenna on and off, and there's a button to depressurize and pressurize the interior. And these are the buttons assigned to the hotkeys, again, some of the things you'll use the most in survival. Less used things but still used a lot, this one might be less self-explanatory so I'll state the reasoning. One is to turn hydrogen engine on and off, for when you really need to. Two is to open and close the door, so if a neutral faction member want to get in and out, you don't have to go through the K menu. Three is to depressurize and pressurize the interior if you want to save oxygen when opening and closing the door. Four is to turn the turrets on and off for when you don't want to shoot at a hostile grid, maybe you're checking on someone's base who might not necessarily be hostile, or you want to save ammo if you're approaching an enemy ship that's in safe zone or similar situations. 5 is to turn jump drives recharge on and off for when you need to preserve energy. Maybe you just went through a long jumps chain and want the batteries to recharge first so it doesn't run out of power. 6 is to turn the lights on and off for when you really want to go stealthy or less detectable when engaging or approaching an enemy. 7 is to turn the antenna on and off for whenever you need to use it or for when you want to go stealthy. 8 is to turn the gravity generator on and off for when you want to conserve power. 9, which I just thought of adding during flying is to disable the backward thrusters for cruise control in gravity. As you can see it still has decent acceleration under 1G, even when it's loaded it should be fine as long as you don't exceed the maximum cargo weight limit in 1G, which is 1.5 kT, so you can fill this ship up until it's 2.8 kT in weight before you can't fly in 1G. It has 20 large hydrogen tanks so the fuel will last you a long time, even in gravity. And it has 38H2-02 gens, so refueling the ship won't take too long, and with 3 large cargo containers you don't have to stick around ice roid mining for ice for too long. You can just fill up the large cargo containers with ice after the tanks are still only partially filled, then go do something else with the ship as the ship refuels using the ice in its storage, which reduces the time spent hanging around ice roids or whatever source of ice you have waiting for ice to be processed before. Mining again, 